So just let me look at this. So, hi. I think I think we're live uh, at one o'clock here in Kelowna. Uh, this is Wayne Wilson. For those of you who I uh, who I haven't met, um, thanks for joining me. We're going to take a look today. I, I, well, let me start off. I'm in I'm in Gray Sage Studio, which is in the north, tucked into the industrial north end of Kelowna. And uh, there are four or five of us here. There's there's me, Selena Said, Robin Flynn, uh, Judith Mueller, and uh, Joan McEwen. So five of us in here um, doing all kinds of artwork. So everything from printmaking to acrylic and, and uh, airbrush work. So uh, I'm delighted that you've been able to join us. Um, this is a Facebook Live session, uh, something that I've never done before. So of course, it's going to go perfectly well. Uh, everybody who knows me knows how just... Uh, wildly technical I am. Um, that's why I have two kids and two young new, young guys who are uh, particularly uh, techy and, and I think I've inherited it, don't you think? Anyways, so uh, I've got two purposes here today that I wanted to uh, bring forward. First off is distraction. You know, this is a, a really peculiar time in our lives. I don't think very many of us have faced anything uh, quite like this, certainly of my generation. Um, so a, a distraction from uh, the coronavirus and all of the social distancing and the artwork is something that you can do on your own that you can do when you're out uh, on a hike with your family and uh, just keeping six feet away from them. Um, the second thing I want to do is um, encourage you to do your own art. I'm going to do a couple of landscape pieces here. And in this, um, I'm hoping that you'll begin to look around the landscapes around you and think to yourself, you know, I can distill this landscape down into a few lines that are going to be quite distinct and telling of that landscape. So um, those are the two purposes that I want to do today. I'm going to do two small pieces that are suitable uh, in this case for little uh, art cards that you can um, that you can put together. Um, so I'm going to do one on Rattlesnake Island, which is just south of here in Peachland, and I'm going to do one of an orchard scene. It kind of reminds me of my uh, my grandparents' orchard in Oliver. So. Um, kind of 20 minutes-ish. Uh, there's lots of opportunity to comment. Um, please ask questions. Uh, once this is down, I will uh, do my darndest to make sure that I get to all of your questions. So uh, just in the background here, some of the uh, fly pattern artwork I've been doing lately. So I'm gonna take just a moment here, turn this, uh, uh, turn this phone uh, into uh, my tripod here, and away we go. So let's give this a shot. There we go. Okay. We got a. We're going here. We got the right side up. All right. So that looks like upside down to me, doesn't it? Yeah. So let me try this here. Let me just turn this around and see if that works any better. <clears throat> there we go. That's what I'm looking for. I'm gonna move this back just a little bit. I love this technical stuff, eh? Yeah, we've got a little bit of delay here. So I am going to move this. Hope we've got it here. Okay. There we go. That's looking a little better, isn't it? Yeah, okay. So. Look, at, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with Rattlesnake Island. There are only a couple of islands in Okanagan Lake. One is up near Carr's Landing, and the other is down across the lake from Peachland, south of here. So uh, you, any of you uh, who know me know that, uh, that I'm a geographer by training, so uh, you're probably going to get a couple of uh, geography lessons in this as well. So um, here we go. So uh, Rattlesnake Island, I'm going to start by doing... Um, by doing one of these distinct trees, you know we have uh, we have ponderosa pine in here, and so I uh, just be real loose about this. You know, this is a a micron pen. It's archival. So it's uh, India ink, um, but don't be too concerned about it. You know, trees are not generally, you know painfully symmetric in all kinds of different ways. So branches kind of go all off different sides, uh, etc. So just take that down on one side, a little bit of a foreground here, thicken up the trunk a little bit. And then, you know, the Okanagan is uh, 
not lots of trees. Ge in terms of geography, it's called open parkland vegetation. So if you're a pioneer here in this area, there's just enough trees to build houses and barns and fences and those kinds of things. And the rest is open grazing land. So that's you know kind of handy if that's your historical connection to this place. So there's that, that uh, kind of rocky landscape. In the background, we want to start defining Okanagan Lake here. So here's, here's kind of a, don't worry about, you know, the shorelines are never really, really even. So we've got this east side of the lake that we're drawing in now. It kind of marches up and kind of the distinct kind of rounded hills that go in the background. And then we want to, we want to draw, the, draw the tiny little rattlesnake island here. We've got the lake shore in the background coming across, stop just before the tree. And remember that the Okanagan landscape is kind of a rolling upland proximate kind of landscape. It's not real mountainous, um, part of the interior plateau. A couple of little mountains in the background. So there's your basic kind of image for Rattlesnake Island and Wild Horse Canyon is, is up off to the left here. So you wanna add some definition to this maybe some depth so and again don't you know this is not picasso i'm not picasso and you're not picasso so you know be easy on yourself roll it out this way um, there you're going to add a little bit of of uh, dimension to these rocks uh, this is as i say open parkland vegetation you've got grasses here the native grasses blue bunch grass at times are historical records of this blue bunch grass growing right up to the saddle horn of, of uh, saddle horses here. It was just that huge. So there's, again, just adding up a little bit of variety. So there's your basic drawing. And I think if you consider you know, the landscapes in around you, whether you're in the prairies and the foothills, whether you're on the coast, etc., you will find uh, a landscape that you can distill down and still recognize that it's uh, that it's a, a setting near you. So that's what I'm trying to encourage. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit of color to this. I'm not going to do any. Um, I, I'm not going to do any watercolor. I'm, in this case, this is um, watercolor pencil Derwent. I'm going to do a couple of colors in it. Uh, remember that that the color from uh, these watercolor pencils can be pretty intense. So I wanna just, this is black. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of black just very lightly through this ink drawing here. You can see it's really light. There you go. And I wanna add some variety to that as well. So I've got a, in this case, a, a brown, it says Copper Beach, pretty much any brown at this stage. Wouldn't be, a, and then maybe a little more intense just in these areas to highlight. And then you're gonna watch how the transformation takes place here with this watercolor pencil. So there we've got just a little bit of, little bit of contrast there. So I'm gonna take just some clear water and just, there we go, over this whole space. And all of a sudden, you've got some definition in the rocks. Bit more water here. There you go. Take it off to the side. Don't be real formal about it. Um, and there you go. So there's there's adding some dimensionality. How's that for a word, eh? Um, to your your landscapes. I want to do one little one more little piece with this though, and I want to add just a tiny little bit of green to the. Uh, to these trees here, or this, these trees, this tree. As I say, this is a, lots of ponderosa pine here. Ponderosa pines are generally, I believe, what you call a pyrophyte. They're able to withstand a certain amount of, of natural forest fire. So there's just adding a little bit of green to that. Maybe take and add, just add some color to those bits of grasses there as well. So there you've got Rattlesnake Island. Um, what, I think what you want to do with all of these things, you know, if you're doing these as a set of cards, what you can do is, is uh, 
I think you should do is always credit yourself for the work that you do. Um, hey, Dorothy, glad you could join us. Is So, title it, this is Rattlesnake Island. And then give yourself credit for it. WW 2020, there we go. And what you want to do with these uh, these little pieces is you want to take them and for those of you who don't know, I, I used to work in, in uh, the printing business years ago, decades ago now. And one of the places I worked was Park Stationers in Vancouver. And we did um, uh, a lot of printing for the legal uh, business, legal industry in BC, all of their minute books and legal forms. One of, and I worked in the bindery. And one of the things that I learned is if you take a glue stick and just to the very top of this and just glue that, just the top piece. So there's a card that you can get lots of, you get them at Michael's, someplace like that. Glue them in right at the top. It's called tipping in. And just adds a little little distinct value to it, I think, anyways. You, you probably recognize this kind of thing when you remember as a kid looking at uh, old books. You would open the, the, the old you know, volume of literature up and there'd be a, a sheet of vellum there. And underneath would be a lithograph. And the lithograph would not be glued in. It would just be tipped in at the top. So um, think about doing that for your, uh, your landscape landscape paintings for your cards. All done on a very simple four inch by four inch piece of watercolor paper that you can pick up at, at uh, virtually any uh, any art shop. Good. We've got, we've got all kinds of people joining us. We've got Barry and Maureen, um, Alicia. Geez, Gord's there as well. So um, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do a, a, another one now. And this is, um, this comes from my own personal history. This is a, a kind of an, or an Okanagan orchard landscape. So um, these are my grandparents uh, had an orchard down in Oliver, south of town. And this is my first recollection of those, those landscapes. So let's start off with just a, a very simple horizon line. Again, don't worry about making it perfectly flat because as they say, horizons are never completely dead flat. So there's your horizon line. And I want to start marching those those orchards trees in. And of course, in the distance they're small, and as they get closer to you, they get bigger. Um, and they're not even. You know, trees are are uh, kind of random bits of biology. So the trees and the I'm going to put five rows in here. I know this is uh, my grandparents' orchard in Oliver, you know, a historical orchard back then. I think they had 60 to 70 trees an acre. I remember when I worked with the Orchard Museum years ago, touring an orchard in Peachland, and it had six to 7,000 trees an acre. So a pretty different kind of landscape. So there's your basic orchard scene. Little round symbols for trees. That's it. Um, and you want to... I'm going to give them some trunks, so just draw it straight down. And gee whiz, I see people are even using this for some homeschooling art class. Wayne Wilson is providing your art class. Now, isn't that cool? Whoever would know, whoever would have known. So there's your tree trunks going in. And you can notice how technical this is, can't you? So, I mean, part of this is, is to try to make it simple. Uh, distill it down so that, that really anybody can do it. We're going to have the sun coming in from the right-hand side here, so you've got shadows going off to this side here. And just all of those tree trunks, just adding a bit of dimension. There we go. And again, the, tr the sun coming in from the right. So you want to, again, add some dimension here. So just squiggly lines. Notice how technical I'm getting here, right? Eh? Uh, the whole point is to, to take the intimidation away from you and say, it's a, intimidation's a barrier. You don't want any barriers in front of you when you're doing this kind of stuff. So there's some, if the sun is coming in from the right, the shadow is going to be on the left. So there's your, your basic orchard scene, the symmetric rows of, of trees. Now in this horizon line, I think you want to add 
a little bit of vertical height. So just kind of add some, it doesn't have to be all the way across, a little, these are some trees in the background on that horizon line. And the pieces off to each side here are a little bit blank. So we can just add a little bit of dimension in there as well. You know, this is a, a farmed landscape and there's little roads and, and uh, pathways all through the place. So there's that and you might find along this that there's some tree lines, maybe some fences, etc. So just add some height to that. And all of a sudden your foreground here has got is really adding up to, to more dimension, I think, anyways. Um, now, we've got the top half that we want to do here. Um, and so we want to add those rolling hills that we looked at with the Rattlesnake Island piece. So if we start back here and, you know, the, tr the hills go up gently and maybe rise a bit. And then another one off to this side. And then you don't want everything really symmetric here, so you add some depth there. There you go. So there's the, the basic layout of an Okanagan orchard landscape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some color to this. Um, it's taking again just a, a little, uh, little brush with some watercolor um, and, and just adding some color to these trees here. And this is one of those things, you know, you want to try to stay in the lines. Something I was never very good at, I have to tell you. I got the strap three times in grade seven back when they had to, the strap, you know, because I, I was kind of like a stay out of the lines kind of guy in those days anyways. Um, so just add some color to this. And you could, I mean, if you wanted, you could do your own landscapes and, and paint the whole thing. Why not? But, you know, you... In, in my case, I want to do lots of these. I've done up lots of these cards and given them out to my family so that they can hand them out as cards as well. So um, there you go. Uh, again, this is uh, the sun's coming in from the right, so you probably put a little bit darker on this left side if you want to spend that much time on it anyways. Generally, I don't. I'll just color it green. The eye fills in all of those other things for you. So there's all of the color that really that I want to add to this. Again, it's an Okanagan orchard landscape, so let's give it a really creative title. Okanagan orchard. And then again, always give yourself credit for the work you've done. W2020. Okay. So there we've got um, a couple of what I hope for you are really simple landscape pieces um, that you can you can do yourself. Um, you, you have these distinctive landscapes around you uh, in your own home, whether that's on the prairies, uh, whether that's at the coast. Um, so think about how you can um, uh, how you can sort of look at that horizon line, those landscapes, and, and just distill them down into as few lines as possible that say this is where we are here. Um, I think if you had people heading south from here, down Okanagan Lake, they would know that that's Rattlesnake Island. They would know that they're in the Okanagan with those distinct, deciduous, symmetric landscapes uh, around them. So I, I hope you found this useful and interesting. And, and uh, if you've got lots of questions or any questions at all, please feel free to uh, to put them in the posts. This is uh, this is gets saved onto my Facebook feed, so I can come back and answer your questions for you. Um, Please visit my website at, w, at waynewilsonart.com. Um, lots of uh, different art there for you. Um, I'm going to do this, uh, if, if this is successful, I'm, I'm going to do this a couple of times, maybe uh, next Saturday and next Sunday, and look at some uh, other cards that, that you could do that are real simple um, simple patterns. you got a birthday to do. Why not do some balloons? Um, dead easy to do, and I tell you, if I can do them, you can do them. Um, some flower scenes, or uh, still life, koi, um, 
This is a, a, a tree trunk from, um, from the beaches on Zihuataneo. Mailboxes, this is pretty much a standard image across Canada. Um, in the Okanagan here, sailboats, lots to, uh, lots to try out. Or maybe you just want to try something real random. These are uh, just scenes of, of uh, coniferous trees. We've got lots of them in, in, uh, in the boreal north in, in Canada. So there you go. Um, watch for the next installment. Lots of questions. By all means, please, I, if I can do anything to help you out, I will. And thanks, so, thanks very much. And, and uh, watch for the next one coming up for another Wayne Wilson Facebook Live. <laughs> thanks again. We'll talk to you soon. And here we go. Now I'm going to take this because I'm such a techie guy and finish Facebook Live.